I sang throughout school. I sang in grammar school, I sang in middle school, I sang in high school. Um, I did not play an instrument. For me, in school, music was a very enjoyable extracurricular activity. I really was not thinking about it as something I would do when I was in school. I mean, when I got to college, I thought, okay, I'm going to be a chemistry major. And once I discovered what the liberal arts were, I went, oh, I can do all this other stuff. So I put chemistry aside and I, I did all kinds of other liberal arts things, one of which was music. I started at Amherst College and decided that the, the all-male fraternity rich scene there was not my thing. So I transferred to Yale and declared history. But I also took, in fact, I placed into a first semester theory class. And that was the, that was the deal. Uh, I realized about a month into this class that I had all of this music in my head. I didn't have the vocabulary. I mean, I was, a, other than my choral singing, I was not trained. But the theory class was simply about putting concepts and terms on the stuff that I already knew instinctively. So I decided halfway through that semester that to change my major from history to music. So anyway, that's how I got started. And I, but that also meant that I was behind. That is to say, I, I hadn't been studying piano for umpteen years. I hadn't been studying any instrument for umpteen years. I did start because um, undergraduate music major lessons were free at Yale. I started studying flute there and continued after I graduated pretty seriously. Um, and I took basically a couple years off to study and write more music. And, well, then ended up doing a master's in composition theory at the University of Illinois and for two years, and then discovered during that time period how much I didn't know. And so took two more years off, think, okay, if I'm really serious about this, I have to do a lot more reading and studying of scores. And I did that, and I wrote some more music, and then um, started the PhD program at Princeton, also theory of composition, and um, I did finish that though, not in the four years allotted, but eventually I did finish the degree. When I taught at two colleges and three or four secondary schools, and at most of them I've had some sort of new music activity going on. At all of them I had, uh, I, I started an electronic music program. One of the powers of electronic music for me, especially in a teaching context, is that it's available, it allows you to do, it allows anybody to do something who's willing to try. You don't need 10 years of piano study, you don't need any prior musical training, you just have to have a sensitivity to sound and an imagination, and some understanding of how the machines work. When I started in music, I didn't plan on doing electronic music. I didn't plan on being a devotee of experimental music of the 20th century. I didn't plan <laughs> on focusing on music in open forms, but it's, I, uh, it's what galvanized my attention and my imagination. So I, I ran with it. I grew up in Lansing, Michigan in the 60s, so the Beatles were a big thing in the 60s, and so was Motown. So, but the combination, I think what listening to most was that combination of kind of the Beatles and Motown. And then in the 70s, I had an older sister and she was big into folk music. So then I got introduced uh, uh, to folk music again in that way. And then the other layer on that is I was a horrible violin player, but I was still in the school orchestra. I mean, I really sucked, but still I was in the school orchestra. So I, um, I had the classical music going on too. Um, and I did take piano lessons for a while. So that was my music growing up. I never touched the guitar, just didn't. And then years ago, my husband and I were going along Route 14 uh, near South Royalton and stopped at a garage sale and bought a Yamaha guitar. And the reason I bought the guitar is I wanted him to play for me. I had this romanticized view of being serenaded, um, but it never panned out. 
And so I really wanted that beautiful guitar music in the house. And so I figured out after a couple years, if I wanted that music, I'd have to make it myself. So that's how I got into playing the guitar. And I started playing in my 40s. And I'm now part of a band and we call ourselves Never Too Late. And that's because I started playing the guitar and writing um, folk songs, I would say, in my 40s. I spent a year in India. While I was teaching in college, I had cultivated, for reasons that are a little bit mysterious to me, I can't quite explain this, but I had cultivated an interest in Indian classical music. And finally I said to myself, there's no way I'm going to learn about this genre, this tradition from books. If I've got to really learn it, I've got to go over there. So I made a lot of phone calls and made arrangements and I found a teacher and so I went over to Pune, India and I spent a year studying Hindustani classical vocal music over there. So this is a tambura which I purchased in Bombay. In the course of my year in Pune I learned or was introduced to anyway a number of ragas. A raga is a mixture of scale and family of melodic patterns that um, when sung, I mean, a raga when performed will always feature those patterns in creative combinations and juxtaposition. So I'm just going to sing some patterns and then I'm going to go right into a song that I learned when I was over there. Um, so it's <laughs> So that's a song um, about a couple on their wedding day. 
I, I had a lot of musical influences growing up and uh I, you know i started in music before i can remember i was i was like three years old uh i think when i got my first uh drum set so i started on the drums and uh as my dad recalls uh the story is that we were watching lassie and i was tapping my foot to um you know the the soundtrack music um so and, and my dad being a musician recognized that uh that i had you know had a beat had rhythm so uh, I got drums and started banging on everything, you know, and uh, got into guitar a little later on. I think I got my first guitar when I was nine, uh, but I didn't really learn how to play it until I was 12. I didn't really start playing guitar until uh, I wanted to sing, um, and I recognized it being an accompanying uh, instrument to singing. And the first song that I remember, like, for sure learning, um, was uh my city of ruins by bruce springsteen uh and i don't think it wasn't written about 9 11 but it came out after that um that album the rising came out uh after 9 11 and uh it just had a big impact on me and uh, i got into bruce springsteen and jackson brown i got into my dad's music uh really early on and that was kind of you know playfully forced i guess uh but I, I really uh, took to it. And, uh, you know, the first album I ever remember driving down the road to is Born to Run. Um, so that's uh, a special, uh, you know, memory. Um, but as far as the music that I was into um, and influenced by, I got into, uh, you know, there was a lot of pop influences back in uh, the early days. I was into NSYNC and Backstreet Boys and, you know, all the singable chorus kind of stuff. Uh, and then uh, later on, I got more into some heavier rock, some uh, Van Halen and uh, Black Sabbath and, you know, some older stuff. I've always been more into uh, earlier music, uh, or at least before, stuff before I was born. But, uh, and then when, when, when I started to realize that a singer songwriter can be, you know, a career, can be a thing i think i was in junior high when i started listening to john mayer and john mayer uh on my generation is a huge influence for learning how to play guitar and sing and be that guy at the campfire you know uh entertaining people and and kind of coming out of his shell so uh john mayer you know still is a very big influence for, for me and for music, um, he's just always found a way to put words and, and music to awkward moments in life and, and uh, you know, things that we can all relate to. If I think about the work I'm doing with the Upper Valley Chamber Orchestra, it's such a privilege to work with these folks because I've introduced them to a fairly wide range of compositions. So it's been a lot of fun for me to explore the music that I've been devoted to and expose this pretty game ensemble of very capable musicians to that music. So that's, that's been a, a real joy for me. Um, what I'm doing with Harmony Night has been a real joy for me um, in that you know, I've also, I, I, I guess maybe the range of musics I've introduced to Harmony Night is maybe not quite as wide, but it's pretty damn wide. That group also has really, really latched on and is seems pretty game. I mean, I, I, I'm assuming they'll let me know if I'm pushing too far or in, in, in a too weird direction. But we seem to be having a good time. And gosh, we're still doing something during the whole COVID quarantine lockdown period. So I'm grateful for that. Who's your 